What is cracker lacking? This right here is a $150 trade-in that we got, and that's Aussie dollars. So it promises to have an i7 inside. It's got a Z77 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the graphics card, I don't even know what that is yet, but first things first, this case needs to be scrapped. I don't have any use for something this dirty, this messy. I mean, look at the back here. We've even got rust, like really bad rust here. And uh, that's just gonna be a nightmare to clean up considering this case is pretty much something that, I mean, no one would really want this. I could keep it around, but I mean, considering the amount of dust just everywhere inside this thing, it is just not worth the hassle because it just doesn't look good at all. And there's no clear side panel. We can't even see LEDs coming through, but the goodies don't stop there. This includes a 520 watt power supply with 40 amps on the 12 volt line. So that's pretty good if it does work. I mean, I don't know what doesn't work and what does work in this rig, but I figured if I pull it all apart, then we can find out easily what the problem is here, since the person who traded in said they don't know exactly what happens, but it just doesn't boot. So we pulled all these components down individually now, and uh, I was actually surprised. It came with a one terabyte hard drive and also a GTX 750 Ti. So they're two really good components. I hope they both work. But we can see with this case, and this is a big problem here, is that it's got corrosion all on the back. The screws even show signs of corrosion on them. So this person, I'm guessing, lived near the beach. And so if the salt water you know, vaporizes, then flows into your home, gets inside of your PC, over time it can cause damage to your components. And now people laugh at me for WD-40, like, hey, WD-40, it's a big joke. But I guarantee you, if this person sprayed a whole layer of WD-40 on these components, then if that's the cause, I don't know what, what's the faulty part yet, but if that was the cause, it may have not have been faulty if the person had used WD-40, if that makes any sense. So, you know, it does have its uses but let's get on with the cleaning and then we shall diagnose the problem. So now all the tech, yes, loving is finished. All these parts are looking amazing. And we've left the heatsink off the motherboard up on the north here because I've actually had an incident in the past where the heatsink fan's been so dirty up here that it's caused the motherboard not to boot properly. So we're just gonna leave that off. And of course, if the motherboard is faulty, then it just saves us putting it on and off again. So with all that said, let's see what was the issue here with this $150 PC. So 
So we've pretty much nailed this down to the motherboard itself. So what I'm gonna do is uh, try a different motherboard now because I've already tried a different CPU, different GPU, different power supply, and it still won't boot. And I did say in the previous video where I got this deal, I thought it was the motherboard. If you haven't seen that, I'll put it up here. It's the parts hunt where I picked this deal up. And the thing is with this particular model, I've already had one of these exact boards come through here with the exact same problem. So there must be some sort of thing with the longevity of these motherboards where they just fail after a certain time. Maybe the traces or the way it was put together, it was just weak. And so something's giving out on this board over time. And so this is the second one that I've had here with the exact same problem. This board is pretty much uh, gone skis, but at the same time, I'm hoping everything else in this build works because if it does, then we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, an i7-3770, a cooler hard drive, power supply, and of course, it's really worth it at that price. This is so weird. At first, I thought the memory, one of the sticks could have been faulty and I tried different Vengeance sticks, but then I realized, no, it was just a motherboard. It doesn't support Corsair Vengeance memory in dual channel. So we had uh, two single channels on the left-hand side work absolutely fine. But here's the weird thing, these rip jaws, they work fine in dual channel on this board. So just another case of gigabyte, lovely BIOS. And I mean, this is a high-end board. It shouldn't have this problem to begin with. But regardless, everything but the motherboard, the original motherboard that we had and we pulled out is working absolutely fine. So we're gonna see what magic we can do now with the parts that we have. So from that PC we had at the start, we've now got all the components here on the desk that I'm keeping, the power supply, the 750 Ti, the one terabyte hard drive, the 16 gigabytes of RAM, and also the 3770. So it's actually a great deal for this whole combo here. But what we're gonna do now for this build is we're gonna exclude this 750 Ti. It's gonna go over there for a later date, for a micro hustle. Like you guys never know when someone comes to you like, look, Brian, my son needs a PC for like real cheap. And you're like, yeah, man, I can accommodate this with a little hustle. I got a 750 Ti. So we save that for a later date. And we're gonna introduce a 120 gigabyte SSD. So these are dirt cheap at the moment. I think I got this for around 30 Aussie dollars. So I'll put all the prices in USD as well as we go along with this. We've got a GTX 1066 gigabyte. We got that for 180 Aussie. Got an LED strip here, super important, $1 and it's a white strip, and this is gonna segue into this cooler right here, which is a Hyper 411R. Now, I can't really find these for sale in America, but in Australia, they're 29 Aussie dollars, so that'd be like 20 USD. So for the bling and sort of like what it adds to the build, it's actually not bad. And uh, this cooler here, we can sort of go away with this, and we're gonna pro rata in a Lenovo motherboard here, and we're gonna take out the i5, and we're gonna put the i7 right in. So if I had to guesstimate the cost of like pro rata in this board, taking out the i5 and the other goodies I got in that PC, I'd say we're looking at about 50 Aussie dollars for this motherboard. And then at the back, we have the final component here. That is the MX330. But this is weird because this came with a power supply. So we don't have to use that power supply. We can actually, we might as well just use that power supply and take this one out and save it for a later date as well because yeah, there's no point in me just removing a power supply and putting another one in that's kind of the same caliber. So without that aside, I'll put the total price of this build now and what spare parts we're getting out of it. And let's start putting this thing together and see what we can come up with. but I'm gonna go put myself to sleep now by doing this and I'll catch you guys soon.
So there's all the benchmarks done, the overclocking finished, and this PC honestly impressed me a lot. And comparing it to the previous build I did, where we did a $500 build with an i7 4770K and a GTX 980, if you haven't seen that already, I'll put the link up here. This one honestly came out where I didn't expect this good of a PC for the money, where we only paid 367 USD and it's a quiet PC. It performs really well in games. As we saw with Apex Legends, we were getting over 80 FPS, 1080p high settings. Anthem probably want to drop that down to medium as the high settings was getting around 50. But the 1% and 0.1% lows were also very smooth. Our CSGO was getting over 200 FPS. The 0.1% lows went down to like 45, but that's still great. It's still going to give you a smooth experience. But when we compare this build to the previous build I did, this one is just honestly more desirable in that it's quiet. The temperatures are very well controlled. Uh, when we had the side panel on versus off, we had 65 degrees with the side panel off versus 68 degrees with the side panel on. This is in a 27 degree ambient environment and that's when the GPU is overclocked. So we can see here that even overclocked, the GPU is having no problems even with just a single exhaust fan on this build in this MX330 case. Now, another thing about this case is even though it's got no front fans at the front, the rear exhaust fan is actually pushing out a lot of air. And so what I've realized out of this build versus the previous build is that you can have all these fancy RGB fans at the front, but if they're not pushing air properly, then they're basically useless. I like how in this case, uh, all pun intended, the exhaust fan is pushing air properly. And so not having front fans installed doesn't make a huge difference, especially when this build only uses up 240 watts. That's the most I saw on the power meter when we were testing this thing in games. So in a nutshell, with this build, the power consumption's low, the performance is really good. You've got an i7 in there, you've got a GTX 1066 gigabyte. Resale value is gonna be good since we also have 16 gigabytes of RAM, an SSD and a one terabyte hard drive. And the best thing is it looks decent as well. It's not the best looking build, but it does look very clean. And we've got that white LED strip, which honestly doesn't look tacky, coupled with that white fan on the Cooler Master H411R. And speaking of that cooler, did an absolutely fine job of keeping the CPU under control. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I really didn't know that this was gonna come out of the video when I started it. I thought I was just gonna diagnose problems and uh, hopefully find what was wrong and then just redo the system up for as cheap as possible. But when the motherboard was damaged, I thought, well, we're taking all the equipment out and then we've got to change the motherboard anyway. We might as well just turn it into a full-fledged build. And that's exactly what happened here. And uh, definitely going to be one that's a good for a flip. And if you guys enjoy these videos and you know what to do, hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comments section below, what do you think of today's build? And also on that note with the GTX 1060 and some other mid-range cards like these, Perhaps I can test them on the 3770 while I've got it here and then compare it against the 9900K to find out on the mid-range how much performance you're losing out on. Maybe that's a video you guys will want to see. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. But with that aside, hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see more of Tech Yes City, I'll put my Instagram links in the description below as well as Twitter, Facebook, and socials. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to share and subscribe and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.